But still, if you want to get in touch or if you want to be in our studio audience, call us on 0207 173 555. That's 020 7173 555. Somebody corrected me about that yesterday, apparently. It's 020 7173. Oh, I don't care. Yes, neither do I. They really. just make them up as they go along. It used to be, oh, what is it, 171? Oh, no. Oh, no. 07, whatever. Anyway, yes, you can also email us. It's rightstuff at 5.tv or you can text us 86188, remembering to prefix your message with TWS. Thanks very much, Shay. OK, uh, good film, Shay. Thank you for that. Uh, I mean, you spoke to people there, so we know, certainly in inner, inner London, I must admit, I'm not surprised to hear those views. But what do local people feel about it? I mean, are they frustrated? Is anything being done to sort it out? There's a lot of frustration to everybody on that video. It was just so obvious that they felt the police must be able to do something. I mean, the last woman we saw there was actually a recovered crack addict herself, and she said it was so much harder because she had these guys on her doorstep every, every day. Every time she left her house, they'd be trying to get her back on it. Um, so, obviously, from their point of view, I mean, she even told police about what she'd been through so from their point of view they just can't see what more Why? they can do. We took to the streets to find out what you thought yesterday and what were people's opinions on this show? We had a load of varied opinions in fact there were quite a few that I couldn't um, leave in for various <laughs> reasons um, but yeah went out put people on the spot as well and I was really pleased that lots of people answered the question um, and let's look at what they said. Let's just go through that again, shall we? <laughs> what do you think she said? <laughs> Certain. I think she was talking about her mother, toilet seats, something to do with toilet paper. It was very interesting. Was though. it very interesting? <laughs> We're going to have to come back to that. In the meantime, in the meantime, Sarah, <laughs> someone said to me, never do a live television show. And I'm beginning to... Yes, and pigs will fly. Let's see if we can squeeze in one more. Cool. Matthew, can I just say it's a really sad day when people like yourself with a professional qualification, degree, all the rest of it, put David Beckham up as a role model. No, it's it's, it's not, I'm not putting, it I'm not putting David sense. Beckham up as a role model. I'm saying as a Matthew, statement of fact, you are a role shape. model. No. David Beckham yeah, is you are a role model. Shut up. On line three, we have Richard from London. Come on, come on. <laughs> If we can, it's getting mean, it's getting nasty. <laughs> okay, Who's quick, on the phone show? Quick, quick email from an Aussie expat. He says uh, he's been here for 16 years because Australia has no culture, they're crass, <laughs> arrogant, and he's moved 10,000 miles to be away from them. So. <laughs> right, we're going to go and speak to George. He's on line two and he's from London. George, good morning. Most of his money. Let's have a quick one from our audience. A very quick one from our audience, please, Shay. Um, yeah, there seems to be a recurring theme of pork in our audience. I've <laughs> yeah. done pork packing. We've got a sausage packer. Moving on to porky pies. There's a guy that worked for Alistair Campbell. Ah. Uh, <laughs> this guy, you worked with chickens. Yeah, I worked with chickens on a kibbutz, uh, going in there like three in the morning. At the moment, thank you very much for the call, and well, try the audience as well, please, Shay. Yeah, well, I grew up just a few miles up the road from you in South West London, yeah. and, and I always felt this kind of tension. Always, I mean, when I went to school, there was it was a very mixed school, mainly black and Asian, though. Yeah. And I could be friends with the Asian boys at school, but it was always obvious to me, and they made it clear to me that on weekends down the park, so, wherever they were part of, they were part of a different community. So, what's the problem then? Why why won't they get along? I think it's just this kind of thing which comes from your parents. There's a lot of parents mm. kind of passing on their own prejudices from years back. Uh, so, so would you say that sort of black-white mm. racial tensions have eased, but black-Asian tensions are, are, are...? Black Asian tensions have always been much more important because you've got a, a small, small community, very similar numbers of people, yep. neither of which feel they're going to get much change from the white community, so they turn to each other for either support or arguments and that's typically where it comes okay. where it comes down okay. to solomon you were in um, in mississippi around the time of the hurricane so you know how a big crisis can can bring out tensions that's right so all the big questions we're just asking them here <laughs> i don't know the answers well let's actually go heather's not the only tan person i've been speaking to recently um, when i was at the baftas on sunday had a good chat with michelle heaton See, I'm feeling a bit washed out. How do I get this, this natural tan look? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. A little bit, I've got to admit, it is out of the bottle hole for this. Although I have just come away from Gran Canaria and it was gorgeous weather, yeah. Okay, Gran Canaria, that's yeah. the secret. Thank yeah, you very much, Monsieur. Bye, right, thank you. Thank you, bye. <laughs> Oh, charm, okay. You star. Thanks for that, mate.